Hi everyone! The Cheese Twins are back! My name is Brienne. My name is Brooklyn and today we are excited to share with you another episode of Cheese Making. Today we're going to be working on a batch of Brie cheese. Brie cheese is known to some as the queen of cheeses and I am so happy to introduce you to our coach, my sister Brie. B-R-E-E, -E, the queen cheese maker for today. <laughs> it is our version of Brie cheese. You might want to view it as a combination of brie and camembert. Right. Generally, as far as I know, brie cheese is made in a larger round. Camembert is made in smaller rounds. Another characteristic, I believe, is that camembert is slightly firmer, while brie cheese can be more soft. Today, we will be doing what is maybe known as petite brie. So our milk has been lovingly extracted from the udders of the goats, and we are ready to begin. Okay, as per usual, Brooklyn will strain the milk and I will talk to you about cultures and cleanliness. Our cultures today are four. You don't have to use four. Flora Danica C11. We like to use this for our soft cheeses, dessert cheeses. This is a very creamy culture, very light, flavorful. We love it for cork and it works beautifully for our camembert brie. We'll be using eighth of a teaspoon of Flora Danica. Along with that, and this is optional, cheddar cheese culture, MA11. Um, we like to use this because of the depth and nuttiness. It has worked very well for us in our brie cheese, so we like to continue to use it, and we'll use about 1 16th to 1 8th. The next two powders that we'll be using are not cultures, they're mold powders. Um, the most important one for brie cheese and camembert, but for brie, particularly is the Penicillium Candidum. This is from cheesemaking.com. You can find it elsewhere as well. SAM3 is the one that we use, and this produces a nice white bloom on the sur surface of the cheese. Sometimes we like to call it kitten fuzz. It just makes a beautiful, almost a mushroom on your cheese. The main mold for your brie. And we'll use just over 1 16th of a teaspoon of our Penicillium Candidum. Another white mold culture that you're going to need, more optional, but we really like to use it. It adds a little bit of muscle to your rind. It's called Geotrichum candidum. This helps the skin on your cheese to not slip when you go to lift it off of the mat and flip it. So it just adds some strength in there to keep your cheese well contained. And we will be using a pinch of Geotrichum. It's two degrees above what the recipe says, but it's good enough for us to add our cultures now. Okay, so our cultures and our mold powders are sprinkled on top of the milk. Do not stir them in yet or they might cake. It's best to leave them to rehydrate for five to 10 minutes and then we will stir them in. Okay, so about 10 minutes later, we are stirring in our cultures and our mold powders. Nice up and down motions, gently. Make sure it all gets incorporated. All right, and make sure that you cover your cheese and we are going to allow this to ripen for 30 minutes. A word about the supplies you will need to make your petite brie cheese. Sushi mats, we have two, four plastic mats as well. Approximately four baby cheese molds. We may not use all four, but likely. For one of these, you can have approximately half a gallon of milk. But if you were doing traditional brie cheese, you would probably use something a little bit more like this mold, which we're not using, but just for interest sake. Three other things. You will need a cookie pan, a cookie dry rack, as well as a good, clean, sterilized cheese cloth. All right, so we are back. It's been just over half an hour. You could possibly leave this to ripen for an hour if you wanted a little bit more moist cheese, but we're finding that half an hour works perfect. So we're going to add our liquid rennet. This is our lovely Walco Ren rennet that we got from Quebec. This is kid rennet. You could also use calf rennet. Our rule of thumb for measuring our rennet in raw goat cheese is quarter of a teaspoon of rennet 
for eight gallons, an eighth of a teaspoon for four gallons. So we're gonna do a sixteenth of a teaspoon, maybe just a tiny bit over for just barely over two gallons. Give it a shake. Make sure nothing's stuck on the bottom. So I just mixed our one sixteenth of a teaspoon of rennet with cold water. A cup to half a cup would be good. And we're gonna gently stir this into our milk. Very gently. And you're gonna stir it for about 30 seconds. Some recipes might say a minute. 30 seconds works pretty good, we have found anyway. Gentle up and down motions. And we're going to allow this to firm up into a curd for about two to two and a half hours. You could go up to three hours. Be careful going any farther than that, otherwise you may be starting to get a little bit too much fermentation. It's nicer to go a bit more over an hour if you have that time, and it allows for a slightly moister cheese in the end, as far as I know. Still the milk. Make sure you cover it. We will see you back in about two and a half hours. Okay, so it has been just over two and a half hours and we are going to check our curd and see if it has a clean break. Then we will proceed with the next step. There's a couple ways you can test for a clean break. There's this way, which is what you have often seen on our videos. And you want to look to see that the curd separates from the knife and that you don't have too milky of whey. This way is slightly milky, but you can also see that it's, it's clear underneath there. Lovely clean break. Here's another way that you can check it. So cut down, just straight down and then up and go sideways and then slightly lift up and you can see if you get two pieces of cheese right there. That's a lovely clean break right there. So whichever way you like to do it is interesting. We are going to cut our curd into half inch cubes. There are two ways you could go about this right now. If you're going with a camembert style, that's gonna be a little bit firmer cheese in the end. You could take all of this curd without cutting it put it into a sterilized cheesecloth and hang it for about half an hour. That gets out quite a lot of whey, a little bit too much whey. The more whey that you can keep in your curd, the more likely it is that you'll have a soft, gooey, runny cheese at the end. So we are not going to hang it, we're going to cut it to allow the curd and whey to separate and then we'll proceed to the molds. So half inch cubes. Okay, so our cheese curds are cut. We're going to let them heal for five to 10 minutes. I'd lean more to the 10 minutes um, just to help the whey to separate from the curd even more. Um, so we'll cover our cheese. And while you wait, set a pot of water to boil on the stove. Now that our sink is nice and clean, we are going to go over to our almost boiling water and sterilize our plastic mats. Our sushi mats and our molds. We have one other sushi mat that I didn't introduce before. This is our long one. Make sure that you use one of these when you are using one of these because this will rust and the rest will go up onto your cheese, especially when it's older. If it has a nice finish on it, then that's fine. But this is an oldie and we use this to insulate from the rest. Hopefully this is enough. We may need more. And if you can squeeze this in. Alrighty, so it's been over 10 minutes, but in your recipe, try and stick with 10 minutes. And we are going to take our whey, separate it from the curd. So we're gonna pour off our whey. And you can see there's a lot of whey separation. That is because we were not able to get to it quite as soon as 10 minutes, but yours might be similar to this. You might be wondering, why are we sterilizing for brie cheese and we don't generally sterilize for other cheeses? We're just sterilizing with the brie cheese because it's a very sensitive cheese and the cleaner that we can comfort ourselves with knowing that it is, the easier the affinage session is going to be because we need to basically baby this cheese for over a month to make sure that it turns out. So knowing that everything was very clean and sterilized helps to rule out any other problems we might have. Here is our cookie rack. 
that fits perfectly in the sink. And we are going to put our long sushi mat over top of that. And we're gonna put these ones on top of that, might as well. I'll spread these out, put the molds on the mats. Be very careful that when you put these curds in, that the molds don't lift up and all of your curds fall out. That's another reason why we use the sink because we have done it before on the countertop in like a cookie tray and we've lost all of our curds and it like all the curds fall all over the place. It's terrible. Also, it is helpful to not do too big of a recipe for breeches. It helps if you put a bit of pressure on top. So if you can get someone else to help you, that is great. And you're gonna do a little bit at a time, one and a half or maybe two scoops per mold in a round robin fashion. It will go down quite a lot. When it gets very full, be careful. And if all your curds don't fit in right off the bat, just leave them sit. Let the curds drain for 10 minutes or whatever, and then come back and you'll be able to fit the rest in. Or get another mold if you really need it. But if you've measured out about half a gallon per mold, you should be good. Okay, so just a little bit of pressure on top is gonna help just to keep it stable. So we have a decent amount of pressure just on top here to hold our molds down. And we are going to leave these molds overnight. You could just say six to eight hours, that'd probably be good enough. Um, you're gonna just let the whey drain out. When the curds have settled down to approximately half of where they are at right now, so halfway down, and it feels safe to flip them, we are going to flip them. So we're hoping to do that right before bed, probably around 10 o'clock or so. So we will see you then. And one quick thing, very, very important for when you're making your brie cheese, also at another stage in your blue cheese. These soft cheeses must have a covering when it's summertime because flies love to lay their eggs in the soft curd. So all the way around, and we're not saying there's a whole bunch of flies in our kitchen or anything. We do our best to keep them out, but you never know. Looks pretty good to me. It's coming kind of a off from the sides. It, it looks very, very, very good. So you need one extra plastic mat. You could do it without it, but this will make your job easier. You can take this, flip. Now, hopefully our bottoms aren't too stuck. Slightly on the side of sticky. So if we had even flipped a little earlier, that would have been better. Um, I think it kind of depends on your recipe. This is happening, I think, because we definitely err on the side of less rennet, so it can be stickier. Now we'll try it again. Good, good, good. It's a little bit broken, but it should make its rind back because it's quite early in this process. So then we'll use this one for our next All right, we will see you in the morning to salt the cheeses. Good morning, everybody. Now we are going to go and look at our cheese and we're going to flip it, salt it, cover it, and leave it for the day and then we will come back maybe tonight put a little bit more salt on and we will continue to wait for the fuzz to grow. If they have made a pretty good shape we're going to just take this off for salting and then we'll put them back on just so it helps hold the shape. Now for salt add about two percent salt I think but we don't really measure it. It's more by feel. So let's say approximately half a teaspoon or so. And we're gonna do about half a teaspoon on the top and half a teaspoon on the bottom. This might be a bit more than that. Personally, I prefer a little bit more salt than not enough. If you don't do enough salt on the rind, 
you will probably have a little bit more problems with gray mold starting to grow later on. Okay, so gently peel this off the bottom and there hasn't been any sticking, so that's nice. And we're also gonna have to salt the sides. This is pink Himalayan salt. Generally we use cheese salt. You can also use pickling salt, but we don't have any of that in the kitchen right now, so this works just as well. And of course, when you come to do this, make sure that you have washed your hands very well. This is really cool. See, you can, you can see the curds, how they all kind of just melded together into their own design. It's really quite pretty. Okay, so now we'll flip. Do the same thing on the other side and the sides. Also keep in mind that if you do too much salt, your molds, the white mold, may take a long time to activate. There has been times when I've salted the actual curds as we have layered them into the molds. It's better if you don't do that because adding salt to your curds directly in the mold will tend to dry out your curds. It causes the whey to release extremely quickly, which you don't want. You kind of want the whey to come out gently and slowly, which will make a moisture curd. And we can put our molds back on. This is just to help the cheeses hold their shape. And we'll cover and we'll flip them again tonight. Hi everybody! It has been 24 hours since I last saw you. Um, this morning I flipped the cheese and did not show you, so make sure that you do that in the morning. Um, we're going to now take it out and we're going to put it in to our trusty Rubbermaid container with a lid. It really seems to do better to make small brie cheese batches. We have a cloth to, so a hand towel to just help to wick up moisture. Some paper towel which we will probably put on top. Okay, so we're gonna just take out our molds. I like to put our dry, clean dry cloth on the bottom, that works out pretty good. If you have an extra sushi mat that's not, not dirty or damp right now, you could use that at this point. We're not going to right now because we don't have an available one. But flip it again, and there you go. Flip. Flip. Try not to let them touch if possible. And flip. Now this is gonna be their home for a week at least. Basically, we are waiting to see fuzzy, cute, white kitten fuzz. You do not want to see blue, gray, black, any other mold besides white. And if you do see anything other than white, it's maybe because it's too damp, if you do see it, just cut it off. Sprinkle a tiny bit of salt on that area, not too much, but a little bit. It just kind of helps to disinfect. Or you could use a little bit of diluted ACV. So apple cider vinegar can also work well. Not too much though, otherwise it could kill the white mold cultures. So there's all kinds of molds. There's like thousands of different molds. This is a small box. The aim is to have our humidity at approximately 85%. So you are going to be changing this towel likely once a day for the first few days. And then as you feel necessary, you could put a, a humidity gauge in here. That's sometimes helpful. But if you can just watch it closely, that also works well. I'm gonna take a couple pieces of paper towel as well. That always works nice. Put it on top. And we are going to seal it because I'm putting this in the shop. If you have a fridge and you're putting it in the fridge, you could leave it tilted so that it has more air circulation. Make sure the fridge does not have active sourdough starter, no, no kefir or kefir buds, even if they are hibernating. You don't want any Floridanica cheese, no yogurt, kombucha, apple cider vinegar, sauerkraut, at least in our experience. Don't put it in a fridge that has any of those in it. Okay, so there we go. Now also write a note for yourself. We are all packed away. 
bedtime. We're not going to show you this on camera, but every day we are going to take it out, flip it, check the humidity, how it's feeling. You do not want it like wet or damp. If there's condensation coming, wipe that off. You'll probably need to change this, but change it. Just hang it. It's going to be wet. Hang it, get another one. And then 24 hours later, use that one, take the other one out instead of always getting a new paper towel just if you want to save on paper towel. We may see you halfway through the week. We are waiting to see the kitten fuzz. Nothing else. Just that. See you later. If you're interested in handcrafted goods, well, I guess you are since you're watching a video on how to make your own cheese, you should visit our website, fourseasonsnorth.com. We're entrepreneurs in our own respective areas. Stockman's supplies a host of high quality leather products, including some of the sturdiest lifetime warranty leather belts available on the market. We also make the old fashioned 1800 style chewing gum with wild spruce pitch and all natural skincare products utilizing our own grass fed beef tallow and raw honey and beeswax from our family beehives. We forage wild herbs such as chaga mushrooms, Labrador tea and yarrow and handcraft the incredible Ivan Chai tea of ancient Russia. We also braid paracord survival bracelets, lanyards and military canteen holders. We felt alpaca mittens, cloches and teddy bears and make traditionally brain tanned bison robes. We handcraft fabric hair flowers that add beauty and style to any hairdo. We have our own family music album and Brooklyn recently released her debut historical fiction novel through these dark gates. Be sure to hop on over to fourseasonsnorth.com and check it out. Hi everybody, good morning. It is Sunday morning. The last time I saw you was Wednesday evening. So we have had Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and now Sunday morning. So we've only had three days and actually on, I think it was on Friday morning, I opened up our little cheese cave here and the cheeses were already starting to bloom, which was a bonus. I thought that it would take at least a week because it seemed like there was a little bit too much salt perhaps, but it hasn't seemed to do anything negative. So the last time I looked at these was yesterday morning. So it's been 24 hours. We're gonna take a look. Every morning I have been switching out the cloths and keeping it as dry as I can, wiping off any condensation. Okay, so see all the drips? That's what we're gonna wipe off later. Paper towel. It's not quite as damp as it has been before. It's gradually starting to not have quite so much moisture. Take a look here. It's interesting, the edges are coming out just slightly. I think it will be all fine, it's kind of interesting. We already have quite a bit of softness coming, which is nice to see. Remember at the very beginning when I talked about our cultures, we had Geotrichum candidum, just a pinch of that one. That was the one that was supposed to help add a little bit of muscle kind of to our rind. So if you don't have that added, be extremely careful when you pick these out. Otherwise the skin is gonna slip. I'm still going to be very careful, as careful as I can be so that we don't get a slip, but it's nice to have that geo in there to help. Also, the hair is gonna kind of have maybe sewn itself down into the towel a little bit, so just be careful. All right, so it's nice. I'm gonna flip it. It's kind of interesting. There's a little bit of space between the actual rind and the cheese inside. So it's like just a little bit of space. I don't know exactly why. I think it should be fine, but it's just interesting to note. Hopefully the inside cheese will cream itself and all of that space will be filled. Oh, it smells so clean. It's like a clean mushroom smell. And you don't want any like fermented or sweet or like, ooh, stinky smell. Not at this point. Later, you're gonna get a bit of a stinky smell probably, at least we do. There we go. Our petite breeze coming very well. So these are the wet towels from this morning. I'm not going to reuse them today, but I will use them tomorrow. I'm gonna to hang them out to dry. And these ones are the ones that I've had over the last two, three days. So I'm gonna use one set. That works well. And I'm gonna just wipe off this condensation. You don't want condensation dripping from your lid onto your cheese or onto this mat if you can help it. So our temperature in the shop right now is about 
four degrees higher than what our recipe says as the highest temperature degree. The recipe says about 58 is the highest that you would want to store it at for the first week. And our shop is at about 61 degrees Fahrenheit. That could possibly also be why the cheese bloomed a little bit sooner. We are going to bring the cheese back out to the shop and age it there for about three more days at 61 degrees Fahrenheit. And in three days, I will see you again. And by that time, we're going to probably wrap the cheese and put it in the fridge where it's cooler. Every morning though, I'm still going to take out the cheese, flip it and change out the towels as needed. See you later. So it's August 18th in the morning and we are coming to update you on our brie cheese. So every day I have been taking it out of the fridge and um, replacing the paper towel, flipping them, being very gentle. They are going very, very well and they seem very, very happy. And today we're going to wrap them and then continue to age them in the fridge and after probably three weeks or so after that continuing to flip every day then we will be able to either eat the cheese or freeze it generally it's not preferred to freeze brie cheese but it works for what we generally do with it but fresh is always better there's hardly any condensation now you, we used to have a whole bunch here but there's just a little bit right here so that's nice i don't like it to be too damp otherwise also the the white mold won't grow this is very dry slightly damp you can see they're cozied in there all together quite happily. This this had broke, I think, when we last videoed. I've just been being very tender with it, but it seems to be okay. It's much preferable if that doesn't happen. I will take them in a moment, but first to introduce you to one more thing that we have not told you about before is the cheese wrap that you'll use. This is from cheesemaking.com. Um, you can buy them in small strips like this or great big large ones. This is for like real brie cheese, like the big, the big uh, molded brie cheese. This one is MRP Mold Ripener White. You can look that up on their website. The one we have here is CWCF Mold Ripened White. Place with the dull side towards the cheese. And that just keeps also the, the humidity fairly consistent. There's a shiny side on the out and dull side on the inside. Be very gentle again because the hair sews itself into your towel. So I'm going to flip it and put it on my cheese wrap. And it kind of Velcros itself. Kind of neat how that works. And you basically just wrap it however it works for you. Kind of like wrapping a present, I guess. And it's nice to have a little piece of tape, which I will grab in a moment. And also this would be interesting to see. So it's soft right about there. Test your, the softness. Here it's, it's soft right about, like, about that thick. Then, it, then it's fairly firm still. Once it has been soft all the way to the middle, that means it's very ripe. So we've only gotten that far. So we got one, two, three, four, possibly a month still until it's as soft as we want. But you could definitely eat it at this time and it's really yummy too. All right, back into the same cheese cave cover with your lid. I'm not going to put our towels back in because I feel it's going to make it too dry. You don't want it too dry. I think if it would get too dry, you might get more tendency towards the gray mold. So you still do need to keep it fairly damp. 86 to probably 90s percent humidity, um, but definitely keep it chilly, so into the fridge. If you don't keep it in the fridge, um, your ripening is gonna happen too fast and it won't be as even. I think that was one reason why the edges were kind of pulling apart and getting gooey, and then the inside was still hard. So slowly ripen is way better. If you fast ripen, it won't even ripen properly. So back in the fridge. Make sure you keep flipping it every day. Add towels if you need to, if it gets very damp, I don't think it will. Monitor if you see any hints of dark coming in underneath the wrapping. You might want to just open it up and scrape that off or see what's happening. Check it, check it out and just rewrap it. 
All right, and that's all for now. We will see you back in two to three weeks, maybe four, for a taste test. What? <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Welcome to the great unveiling of the kitten fuzz cheese, <laughs> otherwise known as our brie cheese. It has not yet been a month. We are anxious to bite into this cheese, but we did not want to do it until we included you guys in our very first taste of this batch. It's always very exciting to taste the first bite of a batch of cheese. So we still have our four bries. We've been flipping them every day and they have been in the cheese fridge. They're doing very well. You can see that there's a little bit of condensation right here. That's fine. We've mm -hmm. been leaving that. We don't want it too dry. Today it is September 1st and we started this on August 7th and we wrapped it on the 17th of August. It's early to be opening these as brie cheeses, but you can have it kind of as camembert or it's also just mix and match to your own flavor. Um, whoops, mix and match. So anyway, we are going to take a look at the first one and then probably leave it and continue to flip it for at least another month and then let you guys see that progress as well. All right. Happy birthday to me. <laughs> and the other nice thing, you guys, um, that we are noticing, there is no gray or blackish fuzz in here, which we have had before if we don't add enough salt onto the outside. You know, remember when we rubbed the salt on the rind? If you don't put enough salt there, you may get fuzzy grayish mold. And we're not getting any of that, so that's great. It's kind of curious though. This is really cool. Look, just, 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 just. Just enjoy the moment. This looks really beautiful. It does. There's a little bit of yellow on the edges. I don't know why. I think it's fine. Nothing smells bad, but it's, it's interesting. It's kind of curious. If anyone knows why it's yellow, let us know. It's just part of the summer sunshine seeping in. Yeah, maybe. Really nice and squishy. Jube jube. As you go to the middle, it gets a little bit more firm. I'd say this is like, it's still soft right about here. Volcano melt. All right, let's taste it. Oh, this is gonna be good. All right, here we go. And remember, when you cut into your cheese, it's not going to ripen very good afterwards. It might ripen a little bit, but as a general rule, once you've cut it, that's where it's at. Oh, wow. It looks so nice. good. It looks like and, white caramel. And you can see here, this is also our aging. As it ages and ripens, the white will become more creamy. See how squishy? Like that. Meow. And then this. Ooh, look, meow, at, look meow, at that, meow, right? Meow, meow. <laughs> so for Brooke. It's perfectly mushroomy. There is no hint of fermentation or sweet or anything. Ugh. It's like a perfect, perfect cheese mushroom. Okay, I'm going to describe what I smell. Okay, on the outside. I smell mold, soft, gentle mold, velvet clean. mold, clean mold. Yeah, yeah, clean mold, thanks. On the inside, I smell a very healthy version of cheese Whiz. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Without that's... plastic yeah. <laughs> and food coloring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. This turned out good. But remember, when you're making your brie, it's extremely finicky. So just make sure that you follow all the directions very carefully and especially stay clean all of the time.
Thank you everyone so much for joining us on this Brie adventure. We hope that you enjoyed it and hopefully you can have as good success with your petite Brie uh, creations as we've had here today. It's not always the easiest thing to get a lovely Brie, but today we found one. <laughs> <laughs> we have been very blessed that this Brie has worked. We have tried quite a number of times to make this video and we Flopped. have not had success. So last year we were trying to make a video on Brie yeah. and it did not work. There was a few reasons that we know now why it didn't work, but just that to say, don't feel discouraged if you try and don't succeed right away, even the second, third, fourth, fifth times, keep trying. It's definitely, definitely worth it. And um, we, we know how it feels and it also tastes super good. So keep trying. Try, try, try again. Yeah. <laughs> subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell button. Please make a comment if you are inclined to. We love hearing from you. Yeah. So thank you so much for all of the kind comments, everyone on the cheese videos and our other family videos. We really appreciate it yeah. and appreciate your support and your prayers. May Yahweh bless you and keep you and your loved ones in his precious care. We send fond farewells to you all from, from the, the cheese, cheese twins. twins. Bye. Our brie cheese will is known as the queen of cheeses, the queen of cheeses. <laughs> <laughs> it's Terry and cheese. <laughs> I don't really like that. <laughs> okay. The queen of cheeses. And we get a very special person to walk us through the process. My queen twin sister, Brienne. Also known <laughs> as Brie. I do not B like that. R E E. Don't, don't like get that. embarrassed. It's okay. <laughs> I mean, what is maybe known as petite brie. So petite brie. Um, okay, so give it a shake. I'm gonna see if I can do this like Brooke. Good.